while contemplating on the Lord's passion, the following words from the prophet Isaiah struck me deeply. So marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. As I pondered on the disfigured Christ on the cross, it moved me to tears. This is the effect of our sin. It disfigures our true image as sons and daughters created in the image and likeness of God. We heard the words of the prophet Isaiah say that he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes, we were healed. I am so grateful what Jesus did for you and for me. But I asked the Lord if there could have been another way to reconcile us to the Father. As I ponder this further, the following words came to me. How else could I have shown the depth of my love for you? Tell them that I love them deeply. You see, Jesus proves his love for you and me. Shedding some of his blood would have been sufficient, but he chose to shed every drop, to drink the chalice of suffering to the very dregs. No matter how great our sin may be, this should give us confidence to approach him in his mercy, to be healed and have life abundantly. He has shown us that we can trust him. Now from an ancient homily on Holy Saturday, it's from the divine office, you might find it there, the office of readings where priests, deacons, and religious pray on Holy Saturday morning. And it's so intimate and it's such a beautiful meditation, this homily, that I find it was worth sharing with you, which reflects the Lord's expression of love for us. He says, look at the spittle on my face which I received because of you in order to restore you to that first divine inbreathing at creation. See the blows on my cheeks, which I accepted in order to refashion your distorted form to my image. See the scourging on my back, which I accepted in order to disperse the load of your sins which was laid upon your back. See my hands nailed to the tree for a good purpose for you who stretched out your hand to the tree for an evil one. I slept on the cross and a sword pierced my side for you who slept in paradise and brought forth Eve from your side. 
my side healed the pain of your side. My sleep will release you from your sleep in Hades. My sword has checked the sword which was turned against you. But arise, let us go hence. The enemy brought you out of the land of paradise. I will reinstate you no longer in paradise, but on the throne of heaven. And so let us arise from our sins with heartfelt gratitude for what the Lord has done for us. As we heard the author of the Hebrews, his words spoken, proclaimed today. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. So I would like to invite you into a spiritual exercise to close your eyes. Imagine yourself at the foot of the cross. You're there surrounded by Jesus' close, intimate friends, his mother, Mary. Listen to them weeping. And John is there, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and others. Hear the words on the cross, Jesus saying, I thirst. I yearn for you. I long for your friendship. I am doing this for you. Come to me. See how disfigured he is. And you hear the words spoken by Jesus. Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Let us rest at the foot of the cross for a moment. Ponder on the love Christ has shown. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for us. We repent of our sins and turn to you at the foot of your cross with confidence in your infinite mercy poured out for us. We invite you to rest in the tomb of our hearts so that we may also rise with you at the resurrection, who live and reign forever and ever. <laughs>